Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com, part two of two, sitting down with the former Braves reliever, Johnny Venters, and rehashing some of the old days, as well as what he thought about this team. It's all brought to you by Annuity360. Go to annuity360.net for your free book. If you want to learn about Active Wealth and the services that they offer, you can also go to activewealth.com. And if you missed any of Ford's Enlightening Financial Radio shows, don't worry. You can listen to those anytime at activewealthshow.com. Incredible opportunity to gain valuable insights into managing your finances effectively. Again, go to Annuity 3 free book from Ford. Again, Johnny Venters, the former Atlanta Brave and reliever. To the fans that have said this past year, because we get this the feedback on our pod all the time, they're down there they're like, pitching sucked, pitching was awful. They get mad at us because another guy that does the pod with me, Lindsey, we kept saying, honestly, it wasn't the pitching when he got to the playoffs. I mean, the bats went dead. Yeah. I mean, you can't ask much more, especially in today's game. Any guy that is sub-3-5 ERA, which all the Braves players were, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's pretty darn good numbers to throw out there. It's, it's tough to complain about anything when you have the season they have in terms of how many games they won and – and those things. I know they had stretches where, where the pitching wasn't great, but um, like you said, I, you know, I really feel like that break that that they get, you know, that the Dodgers got and the Braves got kind of it, it hurts the bats, man. Um, those teams that continue playing like the Phillies and, and you know, go through the wild card, the bats kind of keep keep going. And, and, you know, the Braves had that break and it seemed like the bats kind of went cold. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if they need to look at the at the format there. I just I just. I hated to see them and the Dodgers go out after having such great years. Um, oh, thought, TB, TBS hated to see that too because yeah, <laughs> yeah I know they did. There was there was some money riding on that. Yeah, uh, nothing yeah. against those guys, but Arizona and Texas don't seem to put up the television numbers that the no, LA's no, of the no, world. No, they don't. But I, I mean, I was excited for Texas because it was their first one, and, mm. and I played with a few guys on that team with Tampa. You know, Nathan Eovaldi and those guys, and and uh, Bruce Pochi. Um, mm -hmm. he managed me in the All Star game, so it was cool to see them. But like, but like I said, I I felt like it was a shame that a team as exciting and and had the year like the Braves or and the and the Dodgers were were gone so quickly. Um, so I don't know if it's a format thing with that break kind of hurting them. I felt like, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you see, and it's more than that break too because. You had guys, we talked about at the end of the season, they didn't sit anybody, but Snit was only letting them get like two ABs and then they were sitting. So, yeah, you know, and I know it's two ABs, but if you're Acuna or Olsen, you ain't going to see a lot. If they know that you're only getting two ABs, they're yeah. like, you know what, let's just put them on. And, and no point in giving up a three-run bomb to one of those guys. It's, it's tough to manage that, you know, once you clinch that so early because you, you don't want to get anybody hurt and you try to keep guys fresh, but at the same time you want to, them to stay locked in um so it's kind of a, it's, it's it's a tough thing to manage you know um getting them the abs and like you said if you know you're only going to get they're only going to get two abs i'm not going to give them nothing to hit <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> um but uh you know hats off to those guys for the year they had i know it didn't end up the way they wanted but um uh, i'm a fan um, I, I love taking my boys to watch them play and and uh will continue to be going forward Walk us through the mindset of a reliever. You guys sitting out there in the pen and just kind of, yeah. You the you the you could be heroes or goats because yeah. I mean That's you come in that. and they they give you the ball with a guy on second and third and I know that in the stat line that it's going to the previous pitcher and it's going to go in under them but they're still going to be giving you the bird when you walk off the mound yeah. if yeah. if you give those two runs up. What what are you what are you thinking when you go in there? Is that because that's got to be more mental than it is physical? Because you know your body can do what it's going to do. Yeah, and it's it's more along the lines of you you following, you know, uh, you looking at, at at you know what what they've done previously against you, like scouting. What what's the what's where's your head at in that situation? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I was fortunate. Like I, I wasn't a reliever until I got called to the big leagues. I was a mm -hmm. starter all the way through the minor leagues, and when I got called up, they had you know. Um, a couple of veteran relievers that kind of helped me through that. Um, Billy Wagner was a big influence on me. And, and he, and he said, you know, one of the things he said is like, listen, if you come in and, 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 and give it up or have a bad day, you stand up in front of the media and, and, and you own it. You know, I, I didn't do my job today. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be ready tomorrow to go and, and get it done. Um, in terms of my mindset, it, it, the bullpen was better for me. Cause I was, a, I was going out there to, and letting it rip 
You know what I mean? I'm giving you everything I got every pitch, um, you know, win or lose. And, and so the, that was my mindset. Like I, I was coming right at guys. I didn't, you know, I didn't care who was in the box. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, depending on situations, I would try to make sp- smart pitches to certain hitters. Um, but uh, I try to stay in attack mode and, 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 and just get a job done for my team in any way I can. And if I didn't, um, I tried to, to own, own it, you know, and, and, and move on and, and get better for the next day. Um, that's, that's one good thing about the bullpen as opposed to starting is if you have a rough one, you can get back out of the next day and kind of right the ship as a, mm. as a starter, you have a rough one. You got to wait those four or five days and, and uh, to kind of get, get back going in the right direction. Yeah. And read all those social media posts and all those articles that the writers write about how your career is over and all. Right. That. Right. You get, I, got, <laughs> I got to play with uh, Chris Medlin and he bounced kind of back and forth from rotation to bullpen and, and mm-hmm. to watch him handle it. Um, definitely helped me to, to understand the mindset and you got to have a short memory. And um, actually we've been talking with him about getting involved with our third location at legacy. Okay. I'm in Alpharetta which me and him are, we came up together. We're, we're, we're boys. So mm-hmm. that would be cool to, to, to have him on board in terms of the baseball side. Um, but um, the bullpen mentality, man, you got a short memory. And, and I was, for me, I was just, I tried to stay in attack mode. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wanted to get swings early and get off that field as quick as I could. <laughs> <laughs> you love the good three pitch inning, just, just yeah, three, uh, three ground balls and head to the house. Out of there. <laughs> I love it. Uh, speaking of speaking of meddling, him doing some doing some TV work. Did you get a chance to see that broadcast with Chipper and Smoltz and Gladman? Man, that and was Franco? that was awesome. It was it was it was hilarious, and 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 the fact that I knew know them all and their personalities. Was, well, that's what I was thinking. How do, how do you is listen? We interviewed uh, Glavin on this, and he didn't want to go in too deep detail because he, he knew somebody may watch and, and he may get in trouble. Cause he said, you should have heard the stuff we, he said, I'm not kidding. There almost was not a second show. He said, <laughs> they, they, <Yeah. laughs> he said and because I told him, I said, you guys look more reserved the second time around was because yeah. you, he said, Oh no, we, we got the memo. We were, <laughs> I think they got scalded after that first one, but um, I enjoyed it just because I know their personalities and their competitiveness. And, 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 you know, you got to get a little bit inside of kind of like the clubhouse, Mm. Um, you know the vibe and uh, in the, in the way that we, we treat each other, and there's like a brotherhood, you know, and we can talk smack to each other, and and you know go to battle together the next day. So it was cool to watch them on there, um, knowing their personalities, and I love Glav and, and Smoltz and, and Chipper, and and uh, you know I felt blessed just to just to be around them at all. Um, mm. My time there was 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 awesome. You um you also they had McCann up in the booth one of those times that night and I asked you before we came on here I was going to get you to, I want you to throw one of them under the bus here is yeah, yeah. who'd you rather throw to you had David Ross and Brian McCann who are two oh, of the man. two of the greatest out there yeah. uh, that that have ever been in that position I mean Landon did okay with the two they had behind the plate this year but uh, you, you know those are just two guys um, Ross I I grew up I mean he's just a little bit older than me so he's he's a guy that you know, watched, uh, he, he roomed with my cousin at Auburn. He was a big, right. uh, that my cousin played third. And so, uh, Ross was his roommate. And, and so then he transferred to Florida. So I didn't get to follow him as much. So he became a brave again. Right. And, and so, uh, it, we, he visits with us when he, when he gets down to Auburn and that kind of thing. And so, uh, I got to ask you, who, who'd you like better? Man, that's a tough one. That, <laughs> they were both, they took so much pride in their craft and, mm you know, knowing the hitters and, and what to call, like I told you earlier, I don't think I shook either one of them off ever. You know, they, they would call pitches and I'd be like, I don't want to throw that. But I throw it anyways because they knew better than I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'd been in there the whole game and 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 uh, the pride they took in that was was, was special. And, and, you know, the way Rossi dealt with base runners was was special. Um, I, 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 I couldn't pick one, man. They, they were both – I would not have had the success I had without either of them. Um, to have a guy like David Ross coming mm. off the bench with the, the ability that he had was was unbelievable. And Mac was just – I mean, he, he caught 120, 130 games a year. He was a soldier back there. Mm. And um, to have a guy like David Ross to come step in when he needed a blow was unbelievable. And, and, and I could be happy for Rossi and the success he's had in terms of managing. It doesn't surprise me at all. You know, my first big league spring training, I was scared to death of David Ross. He was this big guy and he was, you know, loud. Wow. But he was 
he was a big, big heart, big teddy bear. And, and, and I got to, got to learn that after a while, but, um, I was so fortunate to have those two, both of them. Um, hmm. I, I couldn't pick one. My son plays actually my, my youngest son, um, plays on Brian McCann's, uh, son's travel team. So, um, is that the one that Frenchie helps coach or is that, a, or is that soccer that he, they, I think know, they, that might be soccer, they, softball or I'm whatever sure. it is. They, they basically Frenchie and McCann, Frenchie had to kick McCann off of coaching. Cause he said he was a little too rough on the kids. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. This is our first seat. This is going to be our, my son's first season with them. Um, they've whooped our butts for a couple of years, whatever team we were on. So mm. I'm glad, you know, they have, they have Brian and they have Javi Lopez, um, the, the left-handed leader that, you know, won three, three or four world series. And, yeah. Um, a talented team with a, a great coaching staff and, and I'm going to be out there trying to help as much as I can. I don't know how much more I can give them than what they got. But well, I'm going to warn you, you may get yelled at us. I've also- <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that. I can handle that. Um, <laughs> I've known Brian long enough that uh, he's not going to hurt my feelings. So. <laughs> I got to ask you this because it got a little contentious towards the end. Uh, I grew up in the era that we hated the Dodgers. Sure. And uh, and really, we didn't like any West Coast team. Hated the San Francisco Giants, too. Uh, and then it became where we hated the Nationals. But it seems like the hate between Braves and Phillies now is is like a real thing. Was that a, was that a thing in the clubhouse? Did, did you guys yeah, have teams that you just didn't want to be a part of? When I first came up, um, the Phillies were on that run. They had, they had just won a World Series in 08, I think, and they had that three-headed monster of a rotation, and they had the Chase Utley and Brian Howard, and, you know, they, they were good, and their fans were tough, and, and you know, it was an exciting atmosphere. Um, the Nats weren't very good, and they seemed to give us the most problems back then. You know what I mean? Um, so um, I enjoyed the Philly rivalry. I really did just because it was, they're – Fan base was passionate. Our fan base was passionate, and it was a it was a dogfight every time we went there and mm. they came to us. And it seems like that's kind of reignited, which which I like to see. Um, you know, hopefully Washington will kind of get going back in the right direction, which I think they started to. Um, mm. So, uh, but for whatever reason, you know, there's always there's te- there's always a team that you know you should beat. You feel like you should beat majority of the time that you struggle with. You know, I feel like one year was the Padres. They weren't very good. We couldn't beat them. And, um, but, uh, the A's were that this year with everybody. Yeah. When it got to interleague play, all the top teams for the national league would go play the A's and they get their rear ends whipped and have to go back home. And then the A's had, I mean, at one point in time, they hadn't even won a game at the first part of the season. And they, but as soon as interleague play started, they became all-stars. Yeah. That's you. You just kind of like hold your hand. Like, I don't know what, (laughs) what, what what we do. You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, Yeah. It gets, it gets frustrating. You said that, Teams like that A's, then you got the Nats. I always said that, and you played with him um, when we played Miami, when Atlanta played Miami. Dan Ugly used to be a brave killer. Oh, my gosh. And then when they signed him, I was like, finally, you know what? That's what you do. If you can't beat him, you just bring yep. him on board. Yeah. And I love Danny. He, 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 you know, I got to play with him when he signed, came over. I faced him when he was with Miami. And they, you know, they had a sneaky lineup with him and yes. Hanley Ramirez. And, and, uh, they had, um, First baseman, I can't remember his name. Talking, they had a good lineup, and, and those two were tough. And uh, when we signed Dan Ugly, I, I remember being so excited and and getting to be around him and the type of guy he is and how hard he played. I know it didn't go the way everybody wanted to for him and, and for the team in terms of his production, but that dude showed up to the field every day and gave it everything he had. Mm. And as a, as a teammate, that's all you can ask for. And, and I loved him as a, as a teammate and as a guy. And, and I, I was glad I didn't have to face him in Miami anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I imagine all you pitchers were glad. I mean, he was. He was a brave killer. It's, now, you said sneaky lineup. I, I always said if they would have played in a smaller ballpark, they'd have had a ton more home runs. I mean, oh, that yeah, was, was great to pitch in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for everybody. And yeah. then you get the other side of things, the Rockies. All those pitchers are trying to get out of there and go somewhere else. Cause yeah. I remember my, my rookie year that everybody talking about Colorado. And I was like, yeah, what? Okay. I think I went in there with I was like four and zero, and I left there. I had two losses. I gave up two <laughs> runs. Just got my butt whooped all the field. I was like, "All right, I get it now. I get it." <laughs> that's happened to a couple of people. That's to, you're not the only pitcher that's ever happened to. Yeah, that place is tough, man. It's funny because it, you know when they they got hand this past year, they brought him over, and he wasn't doing great with Colorado. And then he showed up for the Braves. He became an all star. Yeah. And everybody was asking why, and 
literally it's the Colorado effect. I mean, he it really you is know, your stuff as a pitcher. Your stuff doesn't do what you're used to it doing. You know what I mean? It doesn't move as much. It doesn't, you know, you're what you're breaking ball doesn't have the same bite or, or whatever it is. And, and, and the field's so big that, you know, it's, it's the little, like the dinky hits that fall in that, that, that really kill you. Then you get the homers, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm not surprised that he left there and then came to Atlanta and had success because, you know, he has the track record of, mm. of being an elite reliever. And, and uh, I actually got to see him. He came up as a starter with Miami, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, to see what he's he did out of the bullpen was was fun to watch. This has been cool, man. Enjoy. I always love hearing old stories and 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 especially you, day, man. Yeah, especially you guys talking about, you know, current players and and manager and uh I will ask you this have you had any dealings with Anthopolis whatsoever uh, you know since uh, yeah I mean you know well, the last time we talked I was getting uh, released I believe but um you know I was I was there and, and I, I brought the boys to the World Series after they he made those trades with you know with the Rosario deal and, mm-hmm. and um you know he I feel like he's he's, he's done a great job in terms of of the players he's acquired, the staff he's put together. Um, it's a winning culture and um, the front office and the players stay on the same page. You know, obviously the Freddie Freeman thing didn't go as, as, you know, Braves fans, I don't think, want, you know, I think didn't go as they wanted. And and I don't know. I don't know the, the story. I've heard different. Oh yeah. Different, you know, sides. It's a, it's a business. I mean, it's, it's a business when it comes down to it, but, I, I think that Alex has done a, a, an amazing job in terms of what he's built there and the winning culture and the staff and the players. And it's just a good mix. And, uh, you know, you can't do anything but tip your hat to, to, to him and what he's what he's put together there. I think that they're going to win for a long time. I do, too. I, I, and I, I love every, all the pieces health if they stay healthy, uh, which. Acuna did this year, and uh, he's all padded up now, man. If this guy gets hit, <laughs> if anything hits him on any part of his skin, I'm going to be shy. He looks, he looks yeah. like a he looks like a knight in shining armor out he there. Does. Right? He does. <laughs> I don't blame him either. You know, he kept getting hit that one year, and and uh, you know, couldn't stay on the field. And 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 you know, to see him for a full season healthy, what he can do is it's just a special thing. And and, and I, you know, I hope that that continues. And I hope that those guys continue to have that success. Like I said, Brian Snicker has a place in my heart forever. Um, he's like a father figure. So, um, but uh, yeah, it was a fun season for those guys for sure. That was one of our lines this year. We kept saying we we, we kept one of our headlines. We kept quit hitting our catchers. Yeah. Seemed like it seemed like every game our catchers got hit some way or another. Yeah, and I'm sitting there going, "Golly, these guys have got." I mean, they get banged up enough as it is, and then you, yeah. you know, you're peppering them with 92 mile per hour fastballs. Doesn't help. Yeah, you. I, I think those guys didn't. I mean, they didn't get the credit they deserve. Like they, they had two dudes behind the plate. You know, I mean, Sean Murphy's a stud, and so is Travis Darno. I played against him. I never got to play with him, but um, they're both great behind the plate defensively. Um, Sean throws at an elite level. You know what I mean, and and um, they both can handle the stick, which is it's a it's a rare rare thing to have two guys that can do that. Um, so I feel like that uh, they didn't they didn't quite get the credit they should have this year. Um, but um, like you said, if they, if, if the staff pitching staff can stay healthy and get those couple guys, the Sorokas and the Kyle Wrights back to to being healthy, and you know, there's no telling what what that team can can do. Um, and I'm hoping I'm hoping honestly I'm I'm hoping there's so many guys that live around us. I'm hoping to get them in legacy and, and have them, you know, it, even if just to show their face and, and, and let the kids see them and, and, and uh, you know, be around would be cool. It would be. Uh, legacy Sports Complex is what he's talking about. We hit it at the first of the pod. You guys check it out. Got something for everybody. It's not one of those specialty things where you're sending your kid to pitch in camp and that's all they're going to be doing is pitching for, you know, eight hours a day. And uh, mm-hmm. you, you talked about it the first. I mean, everything from speed and agility drills to yeah. – uh, I mean, you got an MMA guy that's your business partner. I mean, that's he's, <laughs> that's got he's, zero to do with baseball. Like when I walked in and saw him teaching his first class of five year olds, I mean, he's he's a big, he's a big, he's an MMA fighter. You know what I mean? And the way the way he 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 handled those kids was it was fun to watch. Like he had them, they were saying yes sir, and they were, you know, it was cool. It was a cool atmosphere, and uh, you know, I just I'm gonna have my kids in there all the time. Um, mm-hmm. 
as a testament to, to just to what, what what goes on there and the atmosphere that, that that's there. And and I'd love for anybody interested to come just come check it out and see what you think. And and, and if we can help you or you, you, your children in any way, um, please come come check it out. Awesome stuff, man. I greatly appreciate it. Hey, Ben, it was a pleasure, man. It was great talking with you. And, and uh, I'd love to come back on anytime.